when a woman has a hundred thousand in her account even now and the man has three thousand shillings in the pocket they will eat this three thousand finish the man will fuliza finish and copper and the woman is still saying sina pesa but naweza omba ya chama alafu utanirudishia she goes takes a whole day then takes from her account gives you and then starts telling you chama is asking for that money now men unfortunately will not hide anything if their family is about to go hungry i'm telling you if their family is about to go hungry the man will not allow his family to go hungry when he's hidden some money but look at what women do i think we need to start talking to our girl child because women are only loyal unfortunately to their feelings and to what is good for them most of the times they're not loyal to anything else and that's why i mean how would i live a life i've probably spent 40 years with and go and live with my children in us and leave her here we, men don't do that but women do it and that's why i think and i'm sorry to say this that sometimes polygamy is a good thing so that if she goes you see you're left with the other one who cared about you and you are being taken care of and don't let that for those for those who are listening if you don't let that father of yours whom you think is a drunkard or useless man who never don't let him die with your blessings or your mother too when no 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 this mm -hmm. is very specific actually yeah. the blessings are in the hands of the father honor your mother god will bless you for that but the person who will lay their hands on you and bless you biblically is your father and we cannot argue with the bible it is your father and that's why i tell people what you do is look for him wherever he is go tell him dad i bought you a new shirt when if he left yeah, you yeah go tell him dad i have come children are about memories moments. and moments yeah. exactly that's the word they yeah. are about moments yes. she was receiving her first holy communion you are there that child is going for the first time to sing at parade you are there and i do that sometimes they tell me today we are singing in parade so once i pack the car cuz i drop her in the morning i say said in the morning i don't want school bus mas mom on the side i said i don't want school bus in the morning yes uh, in the morning i drop her in the evening and i let her on a bus but when i drop her we have a conversation along the way and when i get to school i go in front and i just sit and i stand where the teachers are because that day she's singing in parade she'll tell everybody in class my dad was there during parade yeah so these are the things that i tell men don't cost you money at kilimani mediation center i do mediations of all sorts of yeah. things yeah and i have seen mothers who are literally being for you know a father who comes and parks here by the way they park here all the time mm -hmm. and tells me i live with my kids I am literally forcing their mother to see them over the weekend. So we end up filing a mediation settlement agreement in court compelling a mother to spend time with her children because she's in every pub in Nairobi and she's 42. And I can say this confidently because I'm not revealing their identity. But she's 42, she's in every pub in Nairobi and the father is struggling with the three children. And they live in a very posh estate on this side of town. and they drive all the best cars so it's about choosing to be a mother and choosing to be a father and knowing that i cannot force a relationship down your throat okay he's your ex you hate him you have all your reasons i don't care but your children see you as the parents and you have to be parents <laughs>
we've been having single mothers come to the show and uh, barely ever had men talk on their side because women have been saying how men have been so oppressive, how they have affected the lives of these children we are talking about, how this leads to the end. When you are an older man or an older woman, what makes these children not take care of you? It's because you neglected them. Remember, it's about pro-aging. The way, the objective of having the older people age aggressively. But now if we have these broken families, we have children who are no father in their lives, who are no mother in their lives, what happens? They become so bitter. That is the thinking of most people. And we had several mothers here, single mothers, who said, you know, the reason why these old ones, is they are neglected, rejected by their children when they are old is because they neglected them when they are young. What's your take on this? To start with, um, the reasons why human beings separate and break up are so many. There are as many as there are human beings. Um, some is because the man is of horrible conduct. Some is because the wife is of horrible conduct. Some is because of misunderstandings too generally. I mean, I do a lot of mediation here and I help people resolve their disputes out of court. Yes. And one of the things I always tell people is once you are done, because it is possible to fail to agree, and it's fine to fail to agree, once you are done, come up with a plan for co-parenting. Okay, I don't like you, you don't like me. That's fair enough. See, lazima tukai pamoja tukatani na panga. It's not necessary. I don't like you, you don't like me. But let's agree that these children, they have only one father and one mother. And don't think that by bringing in a stepfather, because ladies have this weakness, you bring in a stepfather and you say, now this one is going to cushion and fill the gap. Or you bring in a stepmother as a man and you think, no, 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 no. Actually, for those who read the Bible, it says that the blessings of that child are in the hands of the father. And it's not this stepfather you brought, the biological father. Imagine you'll find them in that mulevi. That man you hate so much, that ex you are very bitter about, carries the blessings of your child. So you have to get to a point where you say, we'll separate. You and I cannot be a knight. Because, I mean, if a man is abusive and he's not going to change, why do you want to live with that man? I'm not saying I, I recommend and support divorce. But one thing I do is if you go to a tap and you have a bucket and it has holes and you keep insisting you want to fill that bucket You'll with water, you're the one whose head is not working. Yeah. So it's the same thing with relationships. If relationships are not working, if the spouse you are with <clears throat> has become a subic, intolerant, and you cannot work together, agree. We'll go separate ways, but we'll raise our children together. So have a schedule where the father is involved in the lives of the children and the mother is involved in the lives of the children. Now, unless that parent says specifically, I don't want to be involved, I don't want to play a part, I want to be a useless father, then you cannot force them. Then that now means that we start now talking a lot to these children and showing them that in the absence of your father or in the absence of your mother in life, these are the expectations. Yes, because people come into marriages especially having been raised by broken families. And so they see nothing wrong with breaking their own. In fact, they say, see, I grew up without a father. Who so needs a man? Okay. It's okay. Or I grew up without a mother. Who needs a woman? It's okay. It's not okay. Let's try to show them the value of family because you don't want to bring a bitter child into this life. So if you have bringing, if you are planning on, no, 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 not just sleeping with someone and getting children. If you are planning on raising a family, then don't bring into this country a bitter family. So what you're saying is that raising children is not just about feeding them because you can afford, because you can hire maids, because you can give them whatever education they want. That does not make the child. The role of a father or a mother is very important. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. raising a child is not about what you think. Yeah. Sometimes what or you what think is good. What many think, yeah. I did not plan to join TikTok, but even my online viewers, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. I have a very beautiful daughter who decides to shape my life. And she told me, we are going to do a dance. Mm -hmm. So I told her, mom, I have two left feet. You know I'll dance horribly. She was yeah. like, you can't make your mistakes. Yeah. But we are posting it on TikTok. Yeah. That's how I found myself with t in TikTok. And mm -hmm. I have close to 40,000 followers. Yeah. Because my daughter told me, we dance, we post, we dance, we post. What I'm trying to say is about making what they perceive to be a happy life. Yeah. And being part of it. 
my daughter wants to do a TikTok with me. She wants to do homework with me. With that CBC. dad? CBC, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, on Sunday, she wants to go for mass with me. I'm a very staunch Catholic for those who, didn't, who don't know. So like tomorrow we are going for mass. And it's me and her and she wants to sit at the front seat. I, I have a son who is very reserved and uh, he's in high school by the way. My kids but you are, are our wife. Yes, my kids are big. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is being a father is about knowing what is important to your children and being there for them. You never know what it means for you to be there on their sports day. She's running, she's going to be number three or four, not even number one, but dad was there and dad cheered me on. That is what is important for children. So fatherhood is what is important for the children. He's going for a swimming gala, be there. Your child wants to play guitar, try, get them one. When you do that as a father, that child will carry those memories all their life. And they don't care about these other big things you do. You hired 15 maids, so what? So what? You got be them nice house. food, so what? Big house, so what? Children are about memories moments. and moments. Yeah. Exactly, that's the word. They yeah. are about moments. Yes. She was receiving her first Holy Communion, you are there. That child is going for the first time to sing at parade. You are there. And I do that sometimes. They tell me, today we are singing in parade. So once I pack the car, because I drop her in the morning. I said in the morning, I don't want school bus. That's mom on the side. I said I don't want school bus in the morning. Yes. Uh, in the morning I drop her, in the evening and I let her on a bus. But when I drop her, we have a conversation along the way. And when I get to school, I go in front and I just sit, and I stand where the teachers are because that day she's singing in parade. She'll tell everybody in class, my dad was there during parade. Yeah. So these are the things that I tell men, don't cost you money. If you think about it, when you go to a pub, you spend five, six, seven, eight thousand drinking. Your child wants to go with you at KFC or some place and have their favorite chicken or ice cream. By the way, their budget is very little. Or even for a little. ride. Their budget is very little. Mm. So when you start discovering what children want, you will realize that being involved as a parent does not necessarily mean you have to live with your spouse. You can disagree, but identify those things that are very beautiful and most important to your children and be present. And that's it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and same to the mother. Yes, I, I'm, I'm speaking to all parents because, yeah. I mean, I have seen mothers who are not involved in the lives of their children. Yeah. I... At Kilimani Mediation Center, I do mediations of all sorts of yeah. things. And I have seen mothers who are literally being for, you know, a father who comes and parks here, by the way, they park here all the time, mm -hmm. and tells me, I live with my kids. I am literally forcing their mother to see them over the weekend. So we end up filing a mediation settlement agreement in court, compelling a mother to spend time with her children because she's in every pub in Nairobi and she's 42. And I can say this confidently because I'm not revealing the identity. But she's 42. She's in every pub in Nairobi. And the father is struggling with the three children. And they live in a very posh estate on this side of town. And they drive all the best cars. So it's about choosing to be a mother and choosing to be a father. And knowing that I cannot force a relationship down your throat. Okay, he's your ex. You hate him. You have all your reasons. I don't care. But your children see you as the parents, and you have to be parents. Do you, do you think, or do you agree that uh, these rejections, or because the children will feel rejected, if you are being forced to spend time with them, or you don't even care after you have separated your, with your spouse, you don't care about them anymore, do you think this will have an effect on how they take their parents when they grow old, do you think this kind of a boy or a girl will be having any attachment with this kind of a parent? Either way. Can I tell you something? Yes. <clears throat> Have you ever heard this thing and the doctors will tell you and counseling psychologists will tell you yeah. that when children are in the mother's belly, they hear what you tell them? You need to do your research on that. And when you say good things to them, they hear. And when you say bad things to them, they hear. I know a parent who, when my daughter was in nursery school, she went to the same class with a child who lived with parents that she believed were her parents. But actually they were not her parents. They had adopted her. And the story was that she had been dumped somewhere. 
So she was taken, then went through the whole process of child welfare society. This family that loves her so much adapted her and took her to school. But this was a child who was always rebellious in class. It was a child who was always having a fall mood, beating other children. She was a horrible girl. And uh, the thing is, this child noticed rejection when they were in their mother's womb. Oh. And at birth, this child was thrown away. Remember, they have a heart and they have a spirit. Yeah. So this is a child who knows they are a rejected child. Yeah. And even throughout, when they were going that, through that school, only the principal got to know, but much later. And she got to know that this was an adopted child. The family had never said. So it takes a lot. When you reject a child from as young as being in the uterus, they, they sense the rejection. Oh. Don't bring into this world a child who knows they are rejected by their own parents. The biggest fun for any child is their mother. That's why even when they play well in the swings, they come and tell you, look, mom, how I'm swinging. Look, because they believe you're their small god. Don't take that away. Because when you reject them, they reject themselves and they become an enemy of the whole world. So if that child mistreats you when you are old, that child is not normal. This child is inherently rejected and they live with rejection in themselves. And they, have, they are okay with rejecting everybody and everything. So you have to be the kind of parent who knows what it means to reject a child. Never, never reject a child because it will impact badly. And those are the people who become serial killers. <clears throat> they become all sorts of bad things. They become evil people because they sense rejection from a very early age. Now, what I'm saying, eh, that like it's going on a lot now in the society. Yeah. You find that, because uh, um, mostly I'm in the field with older people. Yeah. My organization is about the older care of older persons. Yeah. And you find these 80, 90 year old men they're in their house by themselves. What happened? My wife left. She went to be with my children in America. She went to be with my children in some country. And they completely forgot about the man. So when you ask about why is this happening, they said because the father was never present, so the children became more <laughs> close to their mother. And that is why they, they have nothing in common with them. And I'm telling you, I have seen, especially in Central Mount Kenya, I've seen a lot you. of older people now suffering by themselves. And I, I want to hear this from the man point of view. I'll also you. tell you that this is untrue. Yeah. And I want to take you, all of you, back to COVID times. Yeah. When a man who had provided for his family for 15 years yeah. loses his job for a year yeah. and the wife leaves. Yeah. Unfortunately, not all, but the bulk of women do not see what you do. They see what you have not done. So that if you bring 90 shillings to the table, they tell you where is 10. You tell them, you can't see I brought 90. If I was doing an exam and I had 90 marks, the teachers would have been clapping for me. Many men have suffered that. You can provide for a family for 20 years, even 50 years. These children who've gone to the U.S., when you do your research, they were educated by this man they dumped. But now we have a mother who intoxicates them, who tells them their father is a bad guy, who tells them their father is a woman, all sorts of things, and they believe their mother. And so they leave this man. But when you go and look at the records, he was the one who was a civil servant. He was the one who had a salary. He was the one who paid their fees. He was the one who did everything. And they usually leave him and go. I think we need to start talking to our girl child. Because women are only loyal, unfortunately, to their feelings and to what is good for them. Most of the times they're not loyal to anything else. And that's why, I mean, how would I live a life I've probably spent 40 years with and go and live with my children in U.S. and leave her here. We, men don't do that, but women do it. And that's why I think, and I'm sorry to say this, that sometimes polygamy is a good thing. So that if she goes, you see, you're left with the other one who cared about you and you're being taken care of. So it's important for us to know that, uh, unfortunately, most of our women, not all, most of them have not lived up to their calling. They will not be with you on the deathbed. And that's why I tell the men, and then you know men are not like women, let me tell you. When a woman has 100,000 in her account, even now, and the man has 3,000 shillings in the pocket, they will eat this 3,000, finish, the man will fuliza, finish, and copper. And the woman is still saying, Sina Pesa, 
but naweza aomba ya chama alafu utanirudishia she goes takes a whole day then takes from her account gives you and then starts telling you chama is asking for that money now men unfortunately will not hide anything if their family is about to go hungry i'm telling you if their family is about to go hungry the man will not allow his family to go hungry when he's hidden some money but look at what women do they'll tell you nimekopa ya chama nikanunua unga but tutarudisha hii ya chama so and it's her money hidden there so that is where the disparity arises so I, I men don't... should also start hiding some money <laughs> for old age that when you are old and they are lying to you unasema hata mimi niko na chama <laughs> but Kinuthia, you've mm. already agreed that uh, it's okay to separate. Mm. We are talking about to separate if things are bad. Yeah. And uh, in this case, mm -hmm. we in this case we are talking about Stop. the families where where women where women men and women have separated and mm. and then the man instead of seeing his children, I was thinking because that is they are saying that's a reason. Mm -hmm. We are talking about people who have separated on mutual agreement mm -hmm. and the man decides to have called to go and see his children and then the mother raises them or the father raises them. Mm -hmm. and then I'm asking, do you think there would be a relationship between this father who absconded them? Do you think, is that the reason why they are doing this? I think that one has got some relationship because in someone you didn't see him and then you struggled with your mother or your father and the time you hear now Kenudia is the president of Kenya that's the time you say oh th th that's my father that's my you see that's, that's my son that's my son and you have seen it you have seen it also I'll so, explain something yeah again for those who read the good book mm -hmm. the good book says honor your father and mother that you may have a long and meaningful life. The writers of the good book don't care whether your father was good or bad. They don't even care whether he was drinking wine like Noah. All the writers of the Bible care about is honor your father and mother. I think for me, and I thank God, may my dad rest in peace, he was a good man. And he raised me well, I would say. If I misbehave, that's me, not him. Because he raised me well. And he disciplined, and he beat me thoroughly, properly. Even if he was a drunkard, I would honor him in his old age. Even if he didn't provide, I would honor him. Not because I am happy, but because it's a duty. And it's required of me. And by the way, the Bible does not suggest. It doesn't ask you, honor your father if he was good. Or honor your mother if you... This, no, 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 no. It is whether he's a drunkard or an abusive father or a father who never cared, honor him. Because your blessings are... And don't let that... For those who are listening, everyone, don't let that father of yours whom you think is a drunkard or useless man who never... Don't let him die with your blessings. Or oh, your mother too. When... No, no, no. Mm. This is very specific. Actually, yeah. the blessings are in the hands of the father. Honor your mother. God will bless you for that. But the person who will lay their hands on you and bless you, biblically, is your father. And we cannot argue with the Bible. It is your father. And that's why I tell people, what you do is look for him wherever he is. Go tell him, Dad, I bought you a new shirt. When if he left Yeah, you go tell him, Dad, I have come. When my son went through his rite of passage just the other day, he's now in high school, I called him up, I went to him. And I told him, my son, the blessings of a child are in the father's hands. Wow. And I'm here to bless you. Wow. And I'm blessing you now and I'm able and young. And I'm go with all my blessings. I reserve nothing. Wherever you I go. want you to be successful. And he went to high school. It's, an, it's a national school. 500 Form 1s. And they made him the president of the Form 1s. Wow. With 11 prefects under him. And throughout, even now, they wanted to make him school captain. Now he's in Form 3. And he's the one who said, don't make me school captain. Just, just give me a position as a prefect somewhere. Yeah, yeah. He's still the head of all the Form 3s. Yeah. The blessings of a father to a child are important. Bless your children every day. That's why I told you I dropped my daughter to school. Why? Because to kifika pale na kafanyanga even akambia, God bless you, my daughter, can I say my amen? Bless your children continuously. And when you are old, they will remember, Dad used to bless me. So it's not lost. My millennials, my Gen Zs, if you have a child, in the morning too, nakachora msalaba hapo, nakambia, God bless you, my son, or God bless you, my daughter. That's the blessings that God has Wherever given they you are. as a parent. Yes. Even if they are Wherever. with their mother. They are kama you bless them. And you, 
he have told you even if your father was a vagabond, respect him and honor him. Because you will live a very long and meaningful life. And now we talked about father, mothers, talked about mothers, you about mouth their dad in front of their kids. Both parents. There are also men who do that. Yes. They talk yes. ill of their mother in yes. front of yes. their children. Yes. Your mother is this, your mother is this, your father is this. What do you say about that? I, I was watching a clip last night about Michelle Obama. And Michelle Obama was saying that one day she went to a counseling psychologist and told them, I want you to fix Barack. Barack is the problem. He's the problem. I want you to fix Barack. And so the counseling psychologist was looking at Michelle Obama. You need to look for that clip. Okay. And telling her, a true so, story. Yes, it's yeah. there. It's a true story. It's, in fact, I'll share with you after this show. Yeah. And then he was like, so the counseling psychologist was like, and what about you? Me, I'm perfect. Barack is the problem. You need to fix Barack. But she says after several sessions, she discovered her own inadequacies. And she said, people are seeing a power couple in Obama and Michelle. It's work. Yeah. They've done a lot of work on it. Yeah. They've even been to counseling psychology. Yeah. And they've had sessions and they've been helped to be able to gel together. So it takes a lot. The problem is people want a good marriage without putting work into it. Yeah. People want a good life without putting marriage into it. But also don't go thinking that your spouse is the problem. The first thing you do is take a journey into yourself and ask yourself, where might I have gone wrong? What is it about me that is wrong? And, and then also, as you, you tell your spouse to do the same, so you first take a journey into yourself before you start saying, where, 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 where? Because it's very easy to point. But when we take journeys into ourselves, then we discover how much farther we are away from the truth and from what is the right thing. I was talking about, about mouthing in front of your children. Exactly. Or now, telling your children how bad your dad is, how bad their mother is. Is that called for? First and foremost, mm -hmm. your children know your spouse is a good person. Yeah. They know their father is a good person and know their mother is a good person. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't say bad things about your spouse to your children. Tell your children... Um, Always try to go back and bring to the children a united front. And if it's not possible, don't say bad things about the mother of your children or the father of your children. Try to avoid telling children. Because parents' words are very important to children. And they are taken with a lot. I mean, if any, my mom tells me something now, I'll take it with a lot of weight and a lot of... Um, so it's good to be cautious to do the right thing and in the right time and in the right way. Wow. Yeah. So, and for children, as we wind up, mm -hmm. the children who listen maybe to their dad or to their mom, how bad their mom or their dad is, what would you tell them? That, tell they, them. They are innocent. Remember, mm -hmm. they have gone to Sunday school and they've been told, obey your father and mother. And here is a mother who is telling them, never talk to your father. Or your father is a fool. They'll obey. Here is a father who is telling them, ah, mama yenyu ni kitubaya. They will obey because they've been told to obey and to believe and to follow what their parents tell them. So you cannot blame the children. I think what needs to happen with the children themselves is um, to continuously even also pray for their family. God listens to the downtrodden and children are in that category of people who soften God's hearts. The vulnerable. The vulnerable. And God loves children. He would listen to them and give them what they ask for. So um, I think family is a very difficult space for me as a person because one, I'm not a counseling psychologist, I'm a lawyer. I'm supposed to be talking of when you come to the children's right. court, when you come and, but mm -hmm. then I'm also human and, and I'm a family man and I am a father and all I usually try to tell people is there is no one formula fits all in terms of family. You know, there's a way you come and say, for example, all cars are petrol, it are petrol. All cars are diesel, it are and it works. For family, aye, the personalities There's are no different. Formula. The houses are different. Your ego, everything is very different. So the only formula is try to be a good person. Try to do something good. Try to avoid those things that break families. And most important of all, as much as possible, be a good parent for your children. 
Wow. And I told you being a good parent is not those big ideas. Material that, uh, things. Uh, they just want you to be there for them on the things that they believe are important. Thank you so much, Kenuthia. Thank you. And my take home, my part in short, Kenuthia is saying it doesn't matter who your parent is. It's not about material. It's not about what they can provide. They could be there even just being there as your role model. And it's not just about money. Respect your father and your mother. And should they not be together? Don't take that one as part of your problem. That is your problem, it's not yours. Just respect them for your blessings so come from them. And you parents, about mouthing, one parent in front of your children, it is a bad thing, it's a bad show, and you eventually affect the children. And that's why we are having children neglecting their parents at all the age is the things you do now. We may not be saving the exes and the boomers, but this message goes now to the Gen Cs and the millennials because you are the current parents. Take that home. And if you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Go to Lucy Moria Network, subscribe for more stories. They are very educative, informative, and you're going to be inspired.